Hey. Hello. I want you in my corner. Oh, hold on. There you go. I want you in I want my, you corner. my corner. Yeah, well, I don't understand where it's playing from. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, great. Engineering is finest. Hi. That did not, that did not sound like you, Kristen. <laughs> Who are you checking out? That's usually the last question I ask. Um, well, actually, this is a little bit shameful, but that that was me. That's a song off No Plans EP. I just was trying to reorient myself with the the track list. Should we want to talk about the songs? Yeah. Together. That's that's, that's what we're gonna do. I hope you know your music. Uh, I hope so too. I've got some shows this week. Maybe this is gonna be a uh, <laughs> beginning and end of the career. Actually, you know what? This isn't any of my stuff. And credit <laughs> again. Yeah. Um, totally. Well, good. Well, thank you. I mean, this was last, very last minute. Joey and I have worked together prior to, well, not worked together, but you know, like uh, he would always send me a lot of artists, um, but it's been slow. Um, and also, yeah, but, <laughs> but also it's now turned into, um, <laughs> it's like th these shows have now turned into more like therapy sessions for the artists. <laughs> like, oh my God, someone wants to listen to what I want to say because you can't go out and tour and you can't talk, uh, talk to the audience as much. So I yeah. have thought I was going to, I put the show on hold for a little bit. I was just doing uh, features of like indie artists that were up and coming and I just kind of go that route. And because I would always go on their Facebooks and their, their web websites and go, well, they were supposed to be in your city today, but... <laughs> But then they did their virtual uh, quarantine sessions. So that was cool. And so um, I forgot which there was an artist that just came out of kind of broke us of our holding out on that and realizing, oh, my God, this is what it was like people re rediscovered radio, even though like we're still Internet based. It was still like you can't do this on Spotify. You can't do this anywhere else to you can do your YouTube stuff, but it's a little bit more personal when it's like the storyteller kind of stuff so it's like this sure. i I've, I've done this show for two years and it actually happened by accident i was um there was a group that was doing like a house basement tour thing it was a very very under literally underground band because they were physically underground in a basement and uh we had time to just kind of hang out and talk and uh i was like oh let's interview this so i grabbed my phone i plugged it in and I had no idea really much about them. I didn't know their music for sure, but I just let them have it. Just like, I don't know, pick some songs. And so they went with it. And uh, it was, yeah. uh, they're still around too. And it was full circle when I went to a show. Remember when you can go to concerts? Remember that? You can, there's like people, they, it's scary to think about, but. And that you was know, actually, have you been ago. in any crowds since the whole Corona? Yes and no by restaurant. I, just, I guess that's a leading question, right? It's like a political, politicized question to ask. But I went to a Black Lives Matter rally in Nashville mm -hmm. and everyone was wearing masks. Uh, this was back in June. And it actually felt good to be in a crowd of people again. Yeah. I was kind of wondering, am I going to have fear of being around others? Is this going to feel strange? But it felt like, humanity affirming it, it, i think it's also a powerful moment to do anything for social change but you were in a very but positive I, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know but then i'll drive by a crowded uh restaurant patio and i'm just like oh get me out of here i have that Ugh. yeah it, it <laughs> i think because it looks abnormal like i um yeah, I don't know. Ridiculous. Ah, run. Right. And <laughs> going to like we have a mall by us. I so I'm in the I'm in Chicago. So I'm I'm going to back right. up what you say. Did you graduate from Columbia? I was kind of creeping your bio. Yes, I did. I well I dropped out of Columbia, so I just wanted to say hi. What's up? Hey folks. If you Arts would like to be a music person, go to Columbia and drop out. <laughs> I will say that I graduated mid 2000. I graduated right when radio was also dying, like mm -hmm. transition. Good like, <laughs> good job, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I give credit to Columbia if if you're listening. 
uh, they did teach you kind of like worst case scenarios. Like I was really expecting to just end up in Boise, Idaho and get bought out by like a Spanish station. And then I was. Why Boise? Just because I wanted to pick the most random spot that you don't start in a big city, no matter where you're from. To, oh, okay. To, to make it big. And, I, and I, I agree with that because, I mean, I've been doing radio since 13 because I was in like a high school station and then I went to Columbia and then, but I'm, I was like, the realization came, came through. So my, my full-time job is in like the education field. So I went that route, but I also still, uh, I got connected to, so we're part of, we're on the Nexus Radio Network, which is uh, close to uh, like Sirius XM, but it's like the free version and it's the international version. Cool. Um, so I've been with them for since almost 10 years. And so oh. I had the full-time gig, but then this just kept going and I was working with them and they, they ran a dance station. So I was doing like actual, not like Fricka Fricka DJ stuff, but it was more like the typical DJ stuff. And then um, I, I, actually ran the high school station that I started at. And um, they're like, hey, you know how to like, run a station. So they wanted to branch out into other network stations. So there's like a hip hop one, there's a, a Latino one, et cetera. So I ran the alternative one. So five years into this, here we are. So I'm, I'm doing both and thanks to Columbia. And we've, we actually work with them a little bit. Well, we had interns before, but uh, what, were you, what was it, music or? I was studying music business with a minor in music performance okay. and a major in partying. It was hard to at Columbia. I thought. <laughs> I, I it was hard to party there. There. Yeah. I, cause I, I, I'm from, where, where are you from? So I, I, well, um, that could be a long story depending on it, but well, I, I noticed I'm your, from Massachusetts. Your 312 phone number. Yes. I kept that downtown Chicago number yeah, that I that's... got. That's a classic. Over living in the dorms in the South Loop. Um, but it was weird, right? It was a commuter school. So mm -hmm. there wasn't really that frat culture or that. Um, yeah, which I kind of thought I would want when I was at Columbia. Like, oh, I wanted to go away because I've always lived so close to the city. Like I grew up in the Burbs, but my, my friends were jealous of me, but I was jealous of them. But now I look back at You're it. Like, I like, wish I was in a field in Indiana right now having the college experience. But instead, <laughs> I'm downtown Chicago. But it's yeah, so for stupid me, to look I back at that. I was a small town of like 10,000 people in Western Massachusetts. And it was, I, my dad worked for UMass. So I could have had a full ride if I had just stayed oh. locally. Again, though, 18 year olds, 17 year olds shouldn't make decisions like that. Um, True. and I wanted to go to the big city and it, it was transformative. It was amazing. I, I wouldn't change it. And I love Chicago so much. I have a little Chicago skyline right here. Oh my gosh. Tattooed. Look at that. Yeah. Small, small. Mud. What's the other one? And actually that's the city behind me on the wall here. Sorry. So that's why I, I asked, asked that. Cause I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't even, I'm going just by your bio. Um, but I was like, I don't know. What's, yeah, it's, it's funny how the, the cliff notes of your bio well, change over time. So this is the segue <laughs> into why we do this show, because I have found I, I only ask what kind of you have out there. So mm -hmm. that's why I said the structure is I'm just going to my go to is the songs to get us to there. But whatever you say in between, I'm going to listen to and then I'm going to go on a tangent. It always goes on a tangent. There's, I never have set questions. I have people like Joey, not, but people like Joey in his position, but not Joey um, would say, Oh, can you give me the set of questions? I'm like, I just, I don't have them. There's, if you, you're a purist, I think you go with your heart. Yeah. And, not if, with you, the blueprint. and if you like <laughs> know your stuff, you're going to talk about it. And I've never met anyone that doesn't want to talk about their stuff. No so, pressure. Right, but it's like <laughs> go on this it. This is the one time, Todd. This is it. This will and then and then I don't believe in one night stands, but I'm gonna have to see other people after this. <laughs> oh no! Wow. But I was happy that so Joey going back to that was I really wanted to do like a Pride artist segment in June, 
but we didn't. So I, and when this came up and I saw, I saw rock, I saw alternative, I saw everything that was what we were looking for. Uh, yeah. I was like, all right, I'm just going to go with this. So I will rock openly on. admit now that I didn't do as much of my homework as I would have liked. Granted, a lot of the other artists that have come in, have, we've now been doing follow-ups with them. We interviewed them last year. I wanted to do follow-ups anywhere. So yes, this will happen again. I will see you again Whoa. In, in a year. Okay. We do, we were, so the point was, the follow-ups were originally going to be like, because at the end of the interviews, I'm always like, hey, what are you gonna, what's, what's the rest of the year look like for Kristen Ford? And, and so you're going to give me that whole thing. And then I'm going to come back and say, did that happen? And then, mm. um, but what happened this year was those artists who had talked about all the festivals and all the things they're gonna be doing last year are now sitting at home. Yeah. And so it was, it's, yeah. it's really made for a, a good time for us to give that, that um, opportunity to let you, you don't, I'm, that you, we're gonna talk about your music, but in between I wanna, people to know who you are since you're still like new as well so sure so are we is this the show that we've been doing or kinda um i okay. i mean it's recording so i'm still new to recording on zoom and i'm actually really impressed with it because the minute i end this it converts it into an m um, an mp3 and then we and cut mode. it up so yeah it's cool. whatever so with that said good news is it's recorded so if you want to Go no no no. I feel, I feel a little sheepish that you have your microphone that looks all professional. I I literally have my interface right here and like a decent condenser mic, and I I'm talking to you with the internal speaker. Is it horrible? No, this Do we is. Need to have you this? have you seen every like Tonight Show and Colbert? Like your your biggest celebrities are just sitting in their pools, being like, "Oh, I'm sorry, what?" So. Okay, yeah. so it's like a it's a power flex. It's a it's a flex, is what you're saying. It's like if you were a built glit and gl speaker, yeah. glamour, and I'm also glad that you also have the glaring sun behind you because I have the same issue here in this room because I had oh, well, to make a makeshift room. Let's see, we could do this. Oh, I'm I'm just saying I'm. That's not any better. No, it, you're. I'm saying you're fine, but I always feel like I have to do this when I'm looking at myself. But let's let's just see what would happen because this is my music room just over here. It's pretty like musicy. So are you so in Nashville now? Are you done in? So Nashville? there's like I could oh. get I could have this going on or I could have yeah. the piano. I'm that's, just trying to tell you, basically, no prep went into this. That's, let's do that room. It. I like that. Um, okay, And we'll great. just randomly change it up <laughs> at some point. You might have to show me, like, hey, this is where I sat. I mean, th th we can yeah. actually do a... Uh, I mean, this will be cute because if, if I need to, um, you know, play a drum beat for you... <laughs> Which is or, always required. Or whatever. You like, might... Make that happen. You might make you might set a precedent to something that doesn't have one that's better right this yeah better. oh that looks oh, so like, prepared too like you board. have if you moved it oh, you're right by the piano. so you're by the piano wow i don't really play piano but in nashville you can have a piano you can have a yard that's why everyone should move here it's so great uh, don't worry about the politics. Just I do. I do want to go down. Imagine the square footage. And you said it's pretty. When we think of the South nowadays, I I just think they just all rules are out the door. But you went yeah. to the Black Lives Matter protest yeah, there. And I can't speak for like all of the South, but I will say that cities like Nashville, Asheville, Austin, it's mid South, um, Houston, they're just blowing up. They're expanding. Atlanta, and mm -hmm. you have so many new people moving into town that it kind of, you create your own little microcosm of culture. And the, this is something we might want to talk about, but like the, the microcosm of Nashville is having a really hard time right now. Like 2020 has been fucking rough. I don't know if you knew about the tornado. No, we, hello donkey. Yeah, that's Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, interview, sir. No, I have not. We had one here, kind of, sort of, but what happened? Um, it was Super Tuesday. It's like March 9th or something. Okay. 
Um, oh, and oh, a tornado ripped through North Nashville, Germantown, and East Nashville and Hermitage really bad. So people died. It also hit like some of the middle Tennessee, but basically East Nashville where there's cool coffee shops and venues and lots of uh, the scene, restaurants, mm -hmm. venues, just it's it's an absolute horror show. We were wow. really impact. I had, I'm from New England, so I had never seen tornadoes. And this was right. rough because it was kind of the one-two punch of a bunch of venues shut down and a bunch of restaurants and bars closed because the tornado hit. And then by the time they're trying to get reopened, right. mm -hmm. COVID shuts everything down. Wow. So the service sector and the musician, the indie music scene in Nashville is really struggling. We're just, we're buckled up and we're trying to support each other, but yeah, it's, and it's been rough. And I, I interviewed a, um, another up and comer who was part of a band, but now he's going solo and he, and we're, we're going to talk about your EP. Cause I do have some questions and I know it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I'll tell you about this. His album is actually called um, all for nothing, all for nada. It's called all for nada. And it, and it came out on March 15th. And I was, I didn't know anything about this guy. And I asked him, I was like, did you like call it that because you did all this work and built it up for six months and now you can't go anywhere. And he goes, no, actually not as my, my wife, that's the, her name. And, all for nada. and it's amazing. If you get a chance, it's, it's uh, um, Alex nickel is his name. Check his interview out because it oh. is exactly kind of what you said. Just like, what do we do? And uh, even, everyone's is, is, is even playing field. Cause then you'll see some of the other um, groups that we've had who have albums coming out. They're just pushing forward with it. We have big names that have come out. They're in the same, they're doing the same kind of zoom with no microphone, and no <laughs> drum kit. And they're, and they're just in the same, same boat and they're hoping, you know, it's a lot of like, maybe we could. And, it, and I agree with the crowd thing because I'm, in a field just in general where or in a city where people are walking around i i'm an outdoor person in the sense of i'd like to go outside so i'm happy that it happened kind of when it did in a way because it got us out but it's all i mean obviously i'm not happy about it happening but it was still like i think it it's teaching us that we can still live and do but i'm not sure if that's going to change much I think there's too much of a stigma about going to concerts and, and doing that. I don't know. I don't know why. I think it's maybe because maybe what are you going to do about drinking? I mean, it's all about like, you're going to have to unmask at some point. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm just. Well, and that issue is interesting because it feels like we have 50 different state, 50 different responses to the crisis. Where Absolutely. Depending on your mayor or your, um, your governor. Yep. I obviously like my family's in New England and I still have a lot of friends over there or I know people out in California and they went in Cali went into lockdown before anywhere else and then right. the south was like it's Memorial Day we're open yeah pew 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 shooting yep. guns in the air like time to have fun and that has not worked out well so it's it's just yeah. been interesting to kind of um this situation I think brings into focus it's important to know what you what each person is comfortable with uh -huh. and decide their own truth rather than trust this new source and don't trust that new source or these people are right these people are wrong but just go with your own heart because there's also the flip side of like all of this isolation and people being out of work and it's really hard it's important to like reach out and try to connect yep and so that's actually why i'm happy to be coming out with an album now is because it's, it's about like let's still be connected even if we're in a yep. world with and, coronavirus and that's what i love about this too is that um even though it, your your music and i'm saying your and anyone's is uh about something else it's you know everyone's pretty much open to interpretation so you know it's like whatever you were writing about and singing about now people connect to it differently 
be, mm -hmm. it, it might hit a chord differently than if it was kind of normal times when it's, you're just kind of looking, I feel like then was more about the sympathy and now is about the empathy. Like, Ooh, she said, ah, yeah, I've been, I'm in that moment. Like you can be struggling and continue to struggle, or you can be, you know, even myself who has the, the, the day job and kind of a routine, I have yet to have a routine mm. in, mm -hmm. since March. Like I had to make this makeshift studio. I, I, I work from this room and I have to physically move myself to go like, all right, I need to get out of the space. I, today, I, the meeting right I, before I had you, I had two iPads, a phone and a computer because I had to do like all that. Like, I just can't stand that. A lot of tech. Yeah. And it's just, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's all a different struggle. But I feel like, well, I still have optimism. I still have a silver. I still feel good about things. I, I think what you just said about reconnecting and we're, we're finding different ways to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll, I'll do my part with this and hopefully. Yeah. So what did you have planned this year? What, what was kind of your timeline early? 2000 when sure. this was coming together? Well, um, in 2019, I finished my biggest crowdfund ever. Uh, I raised $20,000 to make a new album. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to release that album called War in the Living Room. So, is that your living room? <laughs> it, I guess it is. It does there's look no like TV or couch, but there's... If you all um, played in there, that would look like probably like 3000 Watts of. That's a war, it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had this record that's mastered, it's finished. And my dream was to tour it with a full band. Cause it's kind of rocking full band stuff, uh, in venues and sell for the first time vinyl. So I was working towards what felt like, a, a jump to play bigger venues, be opening for artists, um, perhaps release this with a label affiliate. So there were a lot of things kind of gelling and I've been full-time musician since 2014 and uh, have been playing out since like 2008. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, I just kind of know traditionally summers for pride festivals and different music fests and the weather's good everywhere in the country. Like summers are just when I tend to be the busiest and play the most shows and see the most of the country. <clears throat> and, uh, and fall is maybe I have a, a college agent I work with. So like maybe more academic stuff or mm -hmm. different things. And then the winter is really the slow, like March is actually just coming out of the lean time historically for me like november through march not so much mm -hmm. mid-march like south by southwest through end of october that's like game on so in a way like the pandemic hit at a really bad time yeah <laughs> uh how dare it you know? like at, at one point i remember posting on facebook being like wait so is pride actually canceled isn't that crazy <laughs> That's actually the first time I felt it because here in Chicago, the, the network, we we're in the parade. It is the, just the, the high point of the year. And that's probably the first thing I was like, oh, that's, that's this weekend. And just seeing what we were all doing. We were doing stuff, but we weren't doing that. And then, then became festival season. Like we had Lollapalooza, like, oh, wow, that's supposed to happen. I mean, it's just now it's starting to get noticed. At least, it, it, yeah, Katie Home. As a, as a sure. fan of mu like watching music. So sure. I can't imagine. And as a, it's actually the economics of Pride Festivals are how I sometimes have tried to bridge the aisle with conservatives. Uh, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of... Um, you're, you're like, you have the, the money focus in the summer and then the winter, you're, 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 uh, you're conservative in a different way because you're conserving your energy. Yeah, for, for sure. Year. But, but anyway, that was what kind of 
the shutdown of my plans to release this album that I felt like I couldn't have it be all for nada because so many Kickstarter backers and so much energy has gone into it. Mm-hmm. I'm really, really proud of it and I'm excited to release it in the right way. Kind okay. of in the, Got maybe it. not the right way, but in the way that I had envisioned it. You don't want to just throw it and out I have there. to wait for a vaccine, honestly. That should be the name of the album. <laughs> maybe. Just call it The Vaccine. Maybe it is what it we're is waiting the vaccine. for. If I were to release it, this this shit would be over. If it says The Vaccine and you have a physical copy of it, people are going to buy that shit up. And then they're going to, they might be disappointed. Like, I don't know, put some kind of little thing that looks like a, I don't know, what does the vaccine look like? Like the liquid or pill? Put a pill in there. Put like a, a Smarty. You know, mm-hmm. my and then yep. they'll be like, oh, this is just candy. Well, since I have the CD, I guess I'll put it yeah. in. I mean, whatever sells CDs these days is fine. Do the but, last time I used a CD was for a coaster. Oh no! Don't tell people that you're. They're listening to the radio right now. You know, it's internet. They're totally online, and yeah, best way to get music though, if, as long as you make there. money with it. I have an issue with that. I don't know what I find. I'm, I'm actually finding out. Um, side note: we're we we're. we're we're now a partner, partnership station with Apple Music, which is a selected amount of, um, it's, a, it's a group. It's, I felt very like, we're, like it's that one you never hear about, like it's a, skull, it's a skull group or something. I was like, oh my God, we're not gonna get in that. But um, I, I have Apple Music, I, I wasn't doing Spotify. And I'm noticing though, as I talk to people like, I don't know how you're getting your money through Apple Music because the whole boasting thing is everyone has a membership. Everyone pays for Apple Music, period, the, the subscription. So where, so, so if I'm going to play your... My new uh, single, Crooked Youth? I was going to say, I put... Up for a 2020 Youth. Prop Grammy? Yes. Ooh. If I'm going to play that over and over and over again, are you going to see that money? Yes. Okay. You will need to stream it 2,600 some odd times for me to see $10, which is why I encourage people to purchase the EP from my website. But if you want to go ahead and stream it on repeat with the sound down, I'm not going to tell you not to do that. That, See, that's interesting too. I never thought about the technology. Like I, there's definite cheaters out there though. Like they have people just like you from Russia, hit play. And then they just walk out and go smoke for the rest of the day and then they come back. I didn't give anyone ideas, but you know, if you need- <laughs> Why it's, Russia? We don't know. Hold on, excuse me just one second. Sorry. All right, cool. Just running a tight ship here. Oh, sure. Here in Nashville. I had to get my water on. Um, so that, that's a good segue to why did you then put out the EP, right? You have an EP yes. now. Yeah, no plans EP. Ah, so this is where I come in and say, I have a prediction of what this means. Okay. Now that I know you had a plan, the plan is still happening. The album vaccine. No, it's war. I think it's going to be more symbolic. Side note that you are having probably your own war in that living room. Not the war that was initially the war, right. but that's right. for another time when we come back and do that <laughs> album. So then you said to yourself, fuck, I have no plan. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's the plan. I'll put an EP out. But now you, so are these songs then part of the living room sessions or is this something that is, well, no, now I know who Jimmy do. is. Yes, you do. As a songwriter, I don't know if you should know who Jimmy is. I think I wanted it to be a little bit open to the listener to decide. But Yes, well, this no, is no plans is all new songs that have never okay. been 2020. Like, how 2020. so they wow basically, um, 
we recorded in June and now it's coming out. Good job. Well, <laughs> it was very cathartic after working on something and not putting it out. How was the creative you know? process? Because we'll, we'll, we'll definitely then touch base when you're ready for the other album because that'll be awesome. interesting to hear um, that. The, the process of that, because obviously that's going to be a, you're going to have more of a retro perspective of it. Cause that's, I guess so. Yeah. Cause it'll be like, Oh, that time that I made this. Yeah. Music. But now you have this, which you put together it within less than a year. Where, where did these come from? This, these, these songs, like, well, um, I write a lot of songs. I just, love playing guitar i love making music um songs seem to just kind of like flow out of me for for whether that's good songs bad songs mediocre songs amazing songs brilliance who knows mm -hmm. um natural has taught me a lot about collaboration which has been great yeah. there's just so many amazing songwriters amazing bands and studio musicians and basically i called a friend i was really really depressed i actually had written a song called i wish i was dead uh not Good. to be overly dramatic it Track wound up one. not making <laughs> it wound up not making the cut for the ep but i basically got to the point where i was like giving up mm -hmm. just everything's screwed up i'm i've got these songs i don't know and it just kind of clicked to me to call my friend piper Payne, who's a mastering engineer and that's a and, that's a great name and superhero piper Payne. Sounds like, yeah, I don't know. We need the Piper pain right now. Yeah. To take so the pain away it. with a pipe. She and I were talking about just doing something really small together. And I said, I'd like to work with a female like engineer team maybe because I've always kind of worked with men running the soundboard and it just nothing against guys. I love working with them, but I had never had the situation where like all women were kind of running the show. Yeah. and um i watch plenty of empire that doesn't happen <laughs> that's how it happens apparently it should we watch out you know i'm ready to topple the patriarchy like one breath at a time Let's that would be a tv happen. show that's a reality show right there just <laughs> all i no more of these like housewife uh whatever uh housewives and, yeah. and and just put music loving women in a studio running it yeah number one show and it's call it no idea but what, that, uh, that uh, the war in the war in the studio hopefully no wars but women are more chatty than men i'll give you that there's probably more words exchanged in the control room but i got connected with rachel moore who won a grammy last year for i'm with her uh call my name song mm -hmm. and has worked with all of these big names just i was kind of amazed that that we were even connected and basically because of coronavirus the uh studio was available the producer was available the musicians were available and then i had no idea how i was going to pay for this and i got a ppe loan oh. in the nick of time okay. along with some other government stuff that i've been a sole proprietor for years and i've always kind of felt like it's been a hindrance more than anything that was helpful. But oddly, by everything falling apart, it made everything possible with no plans. So including working with, with Joey, who put you and I in touch. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know if he and I could have like met and been both available if it wasn't mm -hmm. for the pandemic. So kind of through me getting to a very low point, everything just started clicking and I was, I'm really excited about no plans. And I think Crooked Youth is a great first single because it, it uh, encapsulates a lot of the sound and the vibe of the EP as a whole. Better than I want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't make the cut, but I think it's important that we not have certain topics that are off limits and that we can just as artists express I think whatever. now more than ever I, and, 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 and i will then 
go back to what you participated in. I don't think the Black Lives Matter movement, and it took an unfortunate event, of course, again to happen, but I don't think it would have been as it has been if it was normal times. Right. It took courage to, to just resurface. It's kind of like we're going grassroots again. Mm-hmm. Like you're, we're restarting, rebranding, re-everything. Um, and Black Lives Matter has been around since like 2012 or 2013. Uh, exactly. So it's not even like a new thing, but I don't, we don't know why after countless murders, it was, you know, this thing in Minneapolis that was the tipping point, but. It's because there's. Right on. Hell yeah. You know. Everyone else wasn't, it's, it's bad to say it, that it, it took an, uh, something that would have been in the news and then we moved on to whatever else was in the news. But because less was happening, because we've all been locked in, that gave that opportunity for it to, to stand out. That's an interesting perspective on it. Yeah, for sure. So with the crooked youth, is there an order to the EP track list or is it just... You said that's a like good is, lead. Is it like a concept that takes you from start to finish? I don't believe it. That I, don't, I think the answer is going to be no, but I also just was curious why it's in the order it's in. Um, yeah, I mean, partially, I, I just believe you're supposed to like put something upbeat that grabs people at the top mm-hmm. and then keep them on a bit of a roller coaster ride in between up and down tempo songs and um my favorite track is actually the closer uh stick shift corolla so which it, songs it, i guess it maybe it's me being um aw shucks those were the days that people would listen to full albums and like trusting that they'll yeah let me it, foreplay them to this big finish of this song but i'm I'm just as guilty that's with, why it's the last song for me with shuffle you know like <laughs> i but but i also you know was at the grew up in the time when you would say oh play track eight you know but i think it's better now because i i don't know any of the numbers so i would rather say oh i want to hear stick shift corolla than track five right yeah, that's true. So, Crooked Youth, Stick Shift, Corolla. What would be another song out of those? And you're not Sophie choicing it. We can go with whatever. But what's <laughs> oh, another one that you're like? Too soon. Um, I, I think uh, Happy is a pretty fun song. It's, it's right in the middle. It talks about Nashville vibe. Perfect. So, you also have, you have a, vi- or is it, no, it's just a lyric video for Crooked Youth, right? That's, yes okay i'll have a music video for happy coming but um, i'll be happy to see it yeah we're gonna tease it out for you though we gotta wait that's fine it's worth it's worth waiting all right so crooked youth i know you said that was this kind of this it's it's a good starting point so you talked about the up tempo in this but what is crooked youth to you about are you the crooked youth or are we in the, the times I, of crooked everything I actually had written that song um, years ago. And for some reason, I just have all that. I just have stacks of voice memos, just so many, way too many, Uh, uh, you know, or things that I've gone through and actually demoed out. But for whatever reason, Rachel really, the producer, Rachel Moore was really, she said, this one sounds like a smash. And, uh, I was able to sort of massage the lyrics a little bit and get it to a point where it felt really fresh and new. And then I'm also such a kind of acoustic guitar and vocal happening at the same time kind of songwriter that it was really cool to sort of peel that away. And I feel like we have something much more synth based, feels like um, Bastille or like, a uh, new death cab for cutie or something rather than a throwback 90s like Anita Franco vibe which I love that vibe and I think we offer it s- some different points but um it was 
in a way, one of the most challenging songs to record because of that sort of taking what I know how to do really well. The songwriting. The songwriting and the like, I almost feel like a guitar is like an extension of myself. Like, yeah. I have played a lot of hours of guitar in my life and um, to then kind of make it be more about, about how do we serve the song mm. with music that feels really now. And I, I think we have achieved that. I do, I, I would say I agree with your, um, can, uh, your recommended if you likes, um, which is what grabs a lot of the, the radio and music industry is like, oh, if you like, the, the new Death Cab, you're going to love it. So I like that you did that because it, it's there's a nice rumble to the song that it does keep you listening because it doesn't start off pow right away. It just kind of, the lyrics start right away and you're, and you're just, you're kind of just in, which is, which is a good way to, to start it. Um, so you said though that you wrote it years ago as you were putting it together this year. Mm-hmm. Do, do you find a different meaning now behind it yeah i think i'm asking where does it go this crooked youth um it's sort of about these times in your life when you lose your innocence and the first uh verse i'm i'm actually singing about a friend that i lost um as part of the opioid Mm. epidemic and those when you lose a peer at a very young age, that changes you in a way that you're, I don't think anything can really prepare you for that. You're a different person after that. And- um, What, could I age, uh, ask what age, around what age? Um, I was 20. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think as a, as a globe, of humans, we're not going to be the same on the other side of COVID-19. Uh, it's another thing where it's like, well, where'd it go? Our, our crooked youth or like just noticing the changes of what, what you're trying to prove or what losing your ability to just be in the moment or just take in something. Be- like we always tr- are trying to get back to our childhood, right? Get back to, childlike simpler time bliss fascination joy Mm -hmm. and um i think as an artist and maybe you get some of this out of the radio work you do where you feel like you get to be a kid in the sandbox still there's that chance for you to have this this artistic spark and explore and i love that through my career i've been able to stay playful whether that's how is this loop going to stack up or. It definitely puts into question two, two things I would say is are people like, if you have passion projects or things that aren't necessarily have not over the years gone any beyond, then I think a lot of people started to question their, their own hobbies and, activities maybe meaning like everyone seemed to always have a, 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 a pet project or something of that nature and I feel that now what's happening is those who are sticking with it and didn't really take this as an opportunity but they took the time now to realize oh I have more time to put towards that thing that's the ones that we're seeing and and we will see more of rather than kind of those ones that are kind of doing it, but they didn't really, you know, they kind of fade away. Does that make sense? Like yeah, you, I, I just think it's, it's tricky. Like I was talking to a friend about, she's a drummer um, here in town. And actually I sing about her on the song, Happy, met a gal with a purple hair to you, right? She just a mm-hmm. uh, cool person, but she was talking about, she wishes the government had a fund where really talented musicians could just get paid to put out whatever they were going to put out and they could just get a stipend. And my initial question to her was who gets to decide who's talented or not? True. Because every time you put a bar, then, then there's a stylistic category that you either fall into or you don't. 
Yeah, you or put in, there's it becomes a bullet point. gap of who could afford the marketing materials in the way that the board wanted to see them. It becomes and, a game show. Yeah, and listen, I would love a fund that just paid artists. And I also was an open mic host for years, and I know that some people should probably not make music their career. They should probably just enjoy it as a hobby. But I don't... I don't know who gets to decide. That's a good question. That's a beautiful thing about art is like, and especially with the internet, your reach is global. You only a few people have to really get what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, it's completely for you to, be, for you to matter, for you to really be a success yeah. for the people that get it. So I guess I'm increasingly trying to resist giving away all of my power like that for other, other people's, um, just judgment of it. Judgment. Yeah. Like that's a good point in the, in the sense that everyone doesn't realize I'll, I'll be guilty of this in the beginning about you think, you know, your audience until you then get it out there. And then you're like realizing it's not, but it, you have, you, you because of the internet world, the bad is saturation. There's way too much. But mm. there, it's, it's kind of like that whole, there's somebody out there for you kind of philosophy where it's like someone, there are other people like you. And that's the kind of been the formula for the station is that it was my molding, but other people that are on it were all, we're on the same wavelength. Like we, we want people who are like us to listen to us. And therefore we tend to get these artists such as yourselves who also have that kind of like they're like like what what I, I like what you're saying is that we're trying to get out of bubbles we're trying to get out of the house but we're also trying to get out of our bubbles we're trying to get out of this like you fit into this category and therefore you are successful or it's it's just really hard to there there's a niche out there for everybody but um now is a good time to just kind of figure out who those people are, but you also don't want to just focus on that for the rest of the time either. So it's, it, it's a good challenge to have because you're doing what you want to do. And, and that's how we feel like we're doing what we want to do. We've been really upgrading a lot over the past few months because mm. we took this as an opportunity, but now the next question that seems to happen with um, is if and when things get back to normal, are you going to be ready for that to switch back to kind of where it was? Or do you think it's not going to happen? You said kind of like, we're, not, we're, we're definitely not going to get back to some normalcy, but. Well, I do have two shows the next two, no, three shows the next three days in person. Well, the third the third day is a filming we're filming but we're still gathering like in person so things have changed but if i'm on a stage 20 feet from the nearest person and everyone's getting their temp checks and seated and wearing a mask into the place and it's either outside or it's very limited capacity i just think at a certain point is better than nothing. It's like the same thing the first time I did like a Zoom hangout with my friends and got drunk and like, we were in four different states, but we were having a hang and it was better than nothing. Yeah. Even though it was digital. And it actually has helped the, of all places, the funeral industry, because <laughs> now everyone can, I, there was like a, a, a podcast about it on the daily. They had, um, talk to this funeral director and he's like this was probably the the best thing ever because anyone from a, that could could view and talk about this person through mm -hmm. zoom mm -hmm. and so right. i never used zoom before the pandemic oh neither did i i actually had a, uh, a hard time with skype i always wanted because skype recorded uh, i thought everyone had skype everyone didn't so when this came i was like oh my god this is great that we're using this platform right. Um, but I was going to also say, going back to something you had said about collaboration, I now also see, so I was going to comment on what you said about going, uh, going to venues. I think 
it's gonna ha it has to happen now to experiment like that. Is this your first time doing something like that since? Yeah, it's okay. my first show since before St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so I feel you're obviously not alone. Other people are doing it, but I think we have to do it now because you, we don't know what's coming up. The fall is unfortunately around the corner and you're gonna have to survive. And people are gonna not want March and April to happen again. They're gonna want to have some, something. But I was gonna say it's a benefit too. Like you, you also then want, knowing who your audience is, you then know more that the people coming to see you really wanna see you because they're not putting themselves at risk. a pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that again is where it's just, it's down to everyone's personal decision of yeah what feels right for them. And, and I wouldn't, I don't feel, it's actually kind of nice as an artist who's toured for like the last 10 plus years to not feel the pressure of the draw. Mm -hmm. What's your draw? Those are like words you live and die by when mm -hmm. you're booking a tour. Because if you tell the promoter one thing and that, you exceed expectations, great. But if you fall short, then mm -hmm. big problem. You shouldn't have said you could do it. Does that also and, go under? And for now, it's like, it's just a whole new world we're in. So I'm going to show up and, and play my songs and connect with whoever's there. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, what has been kind of your draw? Is that also kind of like saying demographic, like your audience? Yeah. So who, who were your go- did you have one in ones in mind? Like, was it the LGBTQ community? Was it? Well, I think it's, it really depends on like what metrics are you using as a songwriter? I have always tried to be really universal about pronouns, mm. situations, being, being personal and yet being as universal as, as possible. Mm. And travel has been such a big part of my career that I've, I've played red states, blue states, Europe, South America. I, I don't assume that people are going to agree with me wherever I go. And, and yet I try to find the common ground, which I think is rock and roll and loving coming together, asking big questions about life. I love a melody that sticks in your head, rhythm. I think that's why I got into looping was because I just couldn't bear the idea of it just being vocals and acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. Even though I was traveling alone, I wanted to have this full sound because I, I love pop music and I love production. And um, if somebody says my song was stuck in their head, that's like the biggest compliment for me. Or that they were going through something and what I had to say resonated with them. So I, I guess to kind of meander around to your question of who my audience is, I think think it's pretty broad sometimes it seems like it's high school kids when I'm playing like queer high school kids when I'm playing a lot of prides um when I look at who's really throwing down and like purchasing things for me I'd say it's like middle-aged men hmm. uh, many many shows it's it's mostly women that are there but I just have tried to be less ageist sexist racist all of the all the categories isms. you could put someone in, but just instead to say, oh, how'd your soul get in that body? Hi, I'm in this one. <laughs> Weird. Uh, I, and and take it from there and see if we can have a good time. That's sort of my whole vibe. What I like, um, so again, I got your information basically like yesterday, but what got me was not only the, the rockness of you, but it was also that even though your promoter promotes more on the LGBTQ, you, I mean, it, it, he also doesn't put people in bu bubbles, but I'm saying you're, you're, are you, are you, not, do you promote yourself as that or just a, a musician? I think yes and no. Actually, I remember working at um, Venus Zine in Chicago when I was still at Columbia College. And I think one of the publishers for the magazine was saying like, are you sure you want to put that you're a lesbian on your, on your bio, on your website? 
Hmm. And this was maybe like 2006 or seven. Hmm. I think it was 07. And like, granted things have shifted since then, but I think it's just been, I've always been who I am. And if anybody wants to talk about it, I'd love to talk about it more. Hmm. And at the same time, I just trust that my music will resonate with people regardless of their gender or their orientation. And, and you that, said you, and I just, that we can, we can have a thing. And you said you found that so far, right? When you yeah. travel, when you traveled. Yeah, totally. And I think it, it helps. Um, in some ways, maybe it's a, a place of privilege where like, you know, maybe if I was, if I wasn't a cis woman, I would have more of a difficult time because people would like immediately see me as say trans and then mm -hmm. you have to be okay with that to get along and it's the same thing with race where people are judged by the color of their skin rather than who they are in any way um so i don't know i also like really miss going to really gay things <laughs> like every year it's been kind of affirming for me to do prides and women's festivals and to see a whole bunch of other people in same-sex relationships or like people on the spectrum and have us all be hanging out and to not be that like one like diversity hire like in the corner of the straight bar mm -hmm. but to just be like we're among our people we're gonna have such a fun time so I always kind of enjoy sort of finding your tribe and letting your hair down which I don't think we really got to do this year. I did watch the, did you watch the international pride thing that they broadcast for? Yeah, slightly. It's, yeah. I watched it. I drank a couple like limeritas or whatever, but it wasn't quite the same. <laughs> and, I, and like I said, I felt in June, I, I missed it. Like, I feel like it just flew by and I wanted to do something more to have artists on or something, but we just, yeah, it was like, I don't know if it was, we had, we had other stuff going on, but it was still like, we didn't want to half-ass it either. Like it, mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. all about planning for us or no planning in your case. See, just like yeah. back. No plans. That the only reason I asked about the LGBT is because in your promo, but again, it's through the promotion company mm -hmm. where that's the first thing that's said where it's LGBT alt rock artist, but that's yeah. also the promotion. But I, look through your other profiles and stuff and that's not the selling point so to speak so i it, it's true to what yeah. you said like i would you rather think that i could be more um of an advocate for the rainbow mm -hmm. umbrella yeah i think yeah i think it's um it's kind of like showing it, it it's one of those like oh I, I didn't know she you know it's like that like you would rather have that than go oh that's obvious and then just put you in that bubble, like, oh, nope. Okay. You know so what she's you, singing about. You like it better with a bit of nuance? Yes. Like you said, the universal okay. part helps. And that, and what my next question was going to be is where, where have you, because I, I usually ask cliche questions like, what's your favorite city? But now I want you to connect that though, is not what's your favorite city, because it's just your favorite city, because we all know Chicago is one of them. <laughs> But what have you found surprising in the world that you, you have that, I, that mentality of, I'm just going to go and play that you did not expect to get a, a response from, and you did? I think touring Germany was, which I've done it a few times. My brother lives over there. Um, but like, I think it was September 2018, I did like 30 dates across Germany. So it was a pretty major wow. tour. Yeah. Just realizing that I could get people who seem kind of uptight and it must be proper and it must be this and that because we're Germans and it's the way it is done. And you don't, you show up to the show on time. And you drink there. The show there. is at 8 o'clock p.m. I will not be there at 8 or 4. Good job. You were there. And I'm not time. going to carry on and make a big stink because I'm here for the performance. And then we'll have a nice time and we'll go home. And like, 
I think it turned a little bit British at the end, but that's basically my German accent. It sounded like a Brit had like a nice cube in their mouth for a moment. <laughs> at the end, at the end. <laughs> An ice cube in their mouth. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, getting my audience to loosen up, whether it be to like clap along or call and response audience stuff or to make an outrageous sound and sometimes doing it with a bit of a language barrier where I can see uh, Deutsch. I don't even know how to say a little Deutsch, but you know, not Be much German. Bequito Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. I I and sometimes right. their English isn't the best, and yet being able to, yeah, you know, like actually see people letting their guard down in front of me, see them getting carried away by the music and the performance. It's a different art and audience. Having a moment together. That, I live for that. Europe is a way. I remember my first, it was just uh, London, I think I was in. No, I was in Rome. Uh, and I saw The Killers and Franz Ferdinand at an outdoor show. Oh, cool. And I almost felt like I was going to die because they are so passionate about the, the music. They are, European crowds are fans. Hmm and they show it and they're very together they're the ones that i think during this time like have the roughest in the sense of uh withdrawal from going to those shows because that's how it is it's packed it's 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 moving it's it's singing along it's everything and it's those little weird ticks that you mentioned like it doesn't have to be a sing-along just making noise they're all about it so i think you yeah. did that was good like i know you probably discovered that as you were out there but it's like, yeah, that's, that's oddly how they're going to remember you. And then they're going to get your stuff. And whether they know exactly what it is or not, it's, you found a, a, an interesting. Uh, or I think um, I am someone who I grew up moving a lot, changing schools. Um, mm. And I've been on a mission to play over a hundred shows a year. I've done it. So every, I saw that in your bio. Year, I was 2008. Yep. So I don't think 20, 20 is going to hit the mark. I mean, I guess we'll see if I can include web. Sh Does this count as a show? I was going to say, actually, no? if, I, if I knew you were, um, we actually have a, an artist that we're going to follow up with um, who wants to do like a show interview where he would kind of play the music instead of us. So what we do on the show is we'll play the snippet about you talking about the song and then we'll play the song. But right. that's that's something that we might, have to come back to um because that would count i would think that would count yeah because there's all those concerts online you know there's we, we post them up on our right. website now the quarantine yeah. sessions but you know it still counts maybe i wonder how many days are left this year could you do 100 shows all in a row and hit 100 if they were like web shows I used to have a calendar that had the what day is um but I would just say quickly, like as someone who's experienced a lot of change and actually kind of thrives being on the move mm -hmm. um, and in varying situations, what makes it never lonely and never scary is just finding connections with people, finding common ground and being able to have a good time. That's, that's and, like and, my and, mission statement. And I was going to say know? that helps that... <laughs> whether the you you know like you said you moved so you have a little bit more verse in knowing who else is out there yeah and i also like it broke my heart to not do prides this year partly because especially you know i've played places like springfield illinois and uh paducah kentucky and lexington kentucky and like places Appleton, Wisconsin, like maybe there's a gay bar and there's a small gay community, but it's not often in spots like that where the LGBTQIA community can like really have a good time and celebrate and yeah. take over the town and getting to connect with kids who for one weekend are really living it up and maybe they go to a homophobic church or like their their families aren't that supportive, but like for one weekend 
we can have a, a thing. And I, I definitely missed them. And I, I bet they missed the pride it, too. I was, yeah, I, was, I would say it put people in, put people back in their bubbles in the sense of not being around their communities, whatever that may be. So now they're been at home, whether that's home where they've been living and pay a mortgage or rent, or they had to go back home, home to a parent or something. So now they're living back kind of where they left. Mm -hmm. And that I think is affecting people as well, because you're like, I, whether you left the place for good or bad, it's still like not, you don't feel complete. Well, I think people are looking for anything that they can count on right now yeah. because everything's kind of up in the air and, <laughs> and in the air and in the air, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think that's just, I would like to be, um, part of the culture connecting people i think that'll be i would love to hear the follow-up to what the shows are going to be like for you and how the reaction not your i feel like you mean the shows this weekend yeah just just in general like how the audiences are and how how different they may be from when you were doing shows last year right so that'll be that'll be something to, to talk about um what question I had was, oh, there's 138 days left. Okay. Oh, you, you cool. Still take a month off too. So just. I know. Me. I'm absolutely going to make it happen. I think they're going to be um, maybe virtual shows. I might need to do a tally and see how many. I mean, because I entered 2020, I played New Year's Eve. So I started this year singing Whoa. on stage. In front so of how, ma how many would you say you have <laughs> now under your belt then? I'm not sure I would have to, yeah, I would have to tally it up, but pretty much my normal life, which I think no plans was, it was a studio project, but it, it saved me in a lot of ways because my entire sense of who I was, was built around booking shows, promoting shows and going out and, and playing them because I would do maybe three or four shows a week or maybe just one show a week, but then the next week I would go on tour for two weeks. Mm. So just, and I had kind of found myself in a bit of a pattern as we do with life where I was playing the same types of clubs. Like maybe I didn't want to set up my own PA and play for three hours, mm -hmm. but that was the gig that was going to pay me the guarantee so that I could make rent so that I could keep going. Got it. Whereas the gig with the great sound system and the lighting and the ticketed show is a lot of times like people who only play gigs like that, they maybe they have another form of income to support them. Right. Where they can play less often. Right. So like I wanted to shift out of some of the lower entry gigs that I was doing, but I wasn't sure how. And then coronavirus was the answer which was just cancel everything so and i don't know how many will still be open on the other side it's so sad that's the yeah we have a big uh, issue of that here in chicago with some very well established places that are not, not they have no other option they don't have a um a outdoor option or a rooftop option um yeah it's i i almost can say i'm avoid i'm avoiding looking that up because the I metro how they're doing the metro yes uh, or just there's oh, any just this metro for sure because that is yeah that is it I, but, i've seen some incredible shows there i saw mgmt open for of montreal there once oh. and then i met the band like outside the venue they and that's what i love about it it's, it's, it's never mgmt out of a van come on i met my, my <laughs> famous story from metro is 2000 to whatever it was early 2000s the white stripes were opening up for sleater kinney and wow. it was little jack in his little red outfit and <laughs> i didn't know anything about him i was there for sleater kinney and gotta support my women gotta support it and 
he was outside the metro, grabbed a cigarette, and I was just standing next to him, and he had his little red outfit on. And I was a prude, but it's like, I know justification for it, but it's like, oh, you're the opener. Like I was here for them. And he kept talking to me. And then he asked me for a lighter. And I'm like, I don't smoke. And I just was so annoyed by him. And he just was so nice. It, uh, so what do you think of the show? Did you uh, I, like, yeah, yeah, you're fine. You're good. So you're I don't fine? Know if you know. That's what you told Jack White. <laughs> I, I made him the fine. dick that he is today because of how I treated him as. And what happens a year later? I know people who have had personal brushings with him. He lives here in Nashville, but I have not. That's cool though. That's wild. But it's about the venue. It's like all, all right. your stories and my story. And I'm sure listeners out there, you all have that venue story. And it's at that venue that, that that's, I will say what you said uh, about finding your community. I'm, I'm filling it right now very small with going to restaurants because I do like to eat outdoors and I'm a, a foodie. That's helping me, but it's like in food terms, it is the appetizer where I am not getting, my, my typical night would be a show, just going to a show. Like it doesn't have to be formal in, in any invitation way. Um, I go to shows, I go to restaurants um, and then uh, yeah, just, just meeting the people and, and going to those venues and just like knowing where to stand. I mean, I just was getting so into that for the last two, three years that now, yeah, I go to the restaurant, but then it's nine o'clock and I'm like, all right, I guess we go binge watch something. Right. right. And then of course it's like a movie that has a concert and you're like, oh my God, I used to do that. Uh, it'll come back. It but will. I it will, will say that, um, I think something I've been working towards uh, has been going increasingly online, thinking about what can I sell, like my web store be flossing. Everybody go check it out, kristenfordmusic.com slash shop, if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, you're, you're, and, get, you're getting to the end of the interview parts. That's why I ask all those big questions. Uh, the You know, like live streaming and making really quality recordings. We were able to do no plans, social distanced. It was um, just a closed studio, a small amount of people working on it. We were wearing masks whenever we were like close together. And yet we're able to make this big sound that now is distributed worldwide. I just, I can see how if we can create if as say as an online radio station, like you're getting into Apple music, you're getting into like all these different avenues of connecting with people mm -hmm. that will serve you after the pandemic is over because people are not, even though we're missing human interaction, people are not going to go back to like calling a restaurant to place a to go order. They're going to want to do everything in the app and have it show up. That's yeah. they're going to want to Amazon prime it, whatever it is. So if our, if our um, service that we're offering can be increasingly digital, great. I just think it, it, is, it, it expands the audience. It's, cr it's creating the new norms is how I, I really see it. Because I do like some of the things that, again, it's like you, you almost don't want to say certain things. Like I'm, I'm, you, you can't say I'm happy this happened, but you can say I like the way certain things have changed due to. Sure. Um, sure. I want to squeeze in, but are you good on time? Because I want yeah, to talk. I'm, you have two. I'm doing fine. Okay, let's talk about happy and yeah. stick shift Corolla. But uh, we'll just go in order. Well, no, I want to go to the. I want to go to the end because you kind of did it that way. Uh, um, stick yeah. shift Corolla. It's was it not? I, I didn't hear it, so I can't. This is the one I have not heard. Stick shift Corolla. Um, Corolla is a car, right? Yes. Yeah, this is because I used to have uh, named a named after um, a car that I had that was like a 1999 oh. gold stick shift Corolla. I didn't know they um, made those. I, so I was going to originally ask because I read it phonetically wrong. I thought it did say Corona. Oh, depending like on the meaning. Corona on your mind. I haven't um, drank the beer in months. 
that song was one that I had, yeah, stay away from that beer, but uh, Stick Shift totally took on a life of its own in the studio, and I felt like I was almost channeling like a, a Jeff Buckley, PJ Harvey, just like crooner, explosive. I felt really powerful. I felt like singing in that studio. I actually posted on my um on my Instagram like I was doing a live of taking vocal passes of it, but like I I think also the recording process for me as a whole was really really nice because I had felt like this recording artist who was on tour a bunch and then wasn't able to release their latest record because there's no touring and like I don't have my job what's my purpose I'm just at home everything's scary and then all of a sudden I'm singing at a million dollar studio on over twenty five thousand dollars of like signal chain to the microphone with a Grammy award winning producer and I've got this kick ass band and I feel so empowered and from that stance i was able to make the song stick shift corolla where i listen to it now and i'm like damn that's kind of harsh actually like that's a lot <laughs> it was certainly more of a confessional feely song when i wrote it than when we had just such a powerful band behind it so so the the change was there in the in the creation of a of a song based on the environment that you're in yeah and i think also feeling like this is the chance to shine and i think as performers we miss that people clapping for us requests that energy exchange it, yeah it's, it's a kind little of... different in the studio but it still was like show us what you got let's it's... go it's a uh, validation as well that you're not just doing it because it, it's you and you want to do it. It's still serving its purpose or you're still serving your purpose. Right. With, yeah. with that, you put in the middle happy, which is uh, not a cover of the Pharrell song and Justin Timberlake. No, no, no. Um, why, why happy in the middle? And uh, why happy now? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, um, happy, I wrote about a time in my life where at one point I was taking piano lessons, bass lessons, guitar lessons, vocal lessons, drum lessons, and occasionally doing co-writes and recording stuff. So I'm a multi-instrumentalist. <clears throat> I'm probably like best versed at guitar and vocal, but I do play all that stuff. And kind of as you're trying to learn something new, as you're trying to improve, um, improve as a songwriter, improve as a, as a drummer, improve as um, like your financial position so that, you know, our generation, I feel like we are like not owning a house yet, or we're not owning a business and like we're having our families parents, or we're getting, we're getting that together at our age. And like, we are wanting to be somewhere where you're wanting to get to the next step. Right. Mm -hmm. But happy is about being happy where you are right now, because right now is the journey and that's beautiful. And if you can enjoy the journey, if you can enjoy where you are now, where I'm like, I kind of suck at piano, but I enjoy playing it. Mm -hmm. Then I know it's inevitable that someday I'd be better at piano. Have you done I'm on my way? Have you done uh, anything maybe outside of music that you've taken up just because you can now? Uh, I'm working on roller skating right now. Oh. Which has been fun. Like and not blading, skating, like four skating, wheels? Like roller derby style, yeah. Wow. Four How many, uh, how's your knees? They're doing good so far. Okay. Good so far. I'm going to be in this little indie flick called Valentine Crush, which I did a few oh. songs for the soundtrack and I'll have like a small part as a derby girl. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get my skating down. But I, I would say aside from that, 
I have uh, enjoyed running for the last like 10 years of my life as just kind of a way to blow off steam. Not something that I'm going to be the best ever at, but I just enjoy it and it's fun. The most uh, running I've done lately is uh, running late to meetings. <laughs> but they're all virtual. It's so easy to get I there. Still, I still find a way. Today, <laughs> uh, someone switched it up and said, nope, we're doing Google. I deleted the app. I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Oh, um, collaborations you had talked a lot about. So let's, let's, do, a, uh, let's do some hypotheticals. Okay. But we're going to do it in um, a style that I used to have, but I'm going to bring back. Eventually, it was called On the Road. So what this question is normally asked is when we do that series, but I'm going to put it into this as well. And, but I'm going to combine my collaboration question with it. The original question was, if you are, were to, um, do, you, do you cook? Do you do meals? Are you avid? Yeah. yeah? So what, what's like your favorite dish to make? Um, I make really good burritos. Any okay. kind of any kind of thing you can put in a tortilla, I can do a good job on. And that. you could have all types of people, vegans, all that kind of time. So you're going to make this burrito, and you're going to have three guests that you could invite, and they can be living and uh-huh. or dead. Whoa! It could be in the past. I've always made it kind of music, but it could just be artists in any form living or not with us, who would those three people be? That's so hard. (laughs) You're not held to it. It's not. And I have to cook for them too. This is really nerve wracking for sure. Because then we're going to have to talk about dietary things, but we'll get into that next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would be pretty keen to hang out with Sister Rosetta Tharp for a dinner. Um, And I think it would be pretty sweet to get together with George Lucas because I've been getting into Star Wars lately. Sort of reimagining it. You know that guy's worth almost $6 billion. And he doesn't show it. So, and he and he just had a really good creative idea. I mean, I just that sounds really interesting to me. And um, and I think, geez, one other person, huh? Maybe Tom York, just because I've been a huge Radiohead fan forever, and he seems like a pretty aloof person to get a hold of. So this hypothetical might be the only way it's going to happen, anyway. I like it. I always couldn't imagine like what kind of conversations they would have. I mean, Tom York and then what they would eat. I think George Lucas would go all out. Um, (laughs) Tom York would probably have the most, he'll be the hardest, but you you would just like the things he puts in his burrito or wants in his burrito. (laughs) It doesn't make sense at first, but then it's like, Oh, I get it. Just like, you know, yes, totally. Yeah. Like, just like the music. And then I'm not, I'm not sure of whose sister. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll, hold on. I got a picture of her. Oh. Hold her up. She's one of the pioneers of rock and roll music. Oh, my God. And I don't know this. So she, she is from. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Plant, Arkansas, I think. And was one of the first women of color to really play first women really to play guitar and tour around and she was doing it in a Jim Crow South where like I don't know stuff like that really inspires me where I think of my foremothers I think of um people who have walked the path of the artists that I'm trying to walk now and succeeded over enormous yeah it's some of some of these people I'm you see succeeding like this and let's say, you know, we don't put a date to it because I was looking and there's a bunch of YouTube um, videos of her. You would be amazed. Like you just said, um, the times that they did this and you have to question, wait, where were they at what time? Like it's mm-hmm. that's right there instantly. Right. Who, who are some of your, um, I, I know on the website, it talks about influences, but 
um, you referenced uh, several people to, today. Um, on, I'm an Ana DeFranco fan, so you mentioned that. Uh, yeah. Talked about Bruce Springsteen, but who are some? Well, well, we'll combine this one in the sense that who are the ones that you're still just that channel through you, and then who do you listen to now, wherever it may be, that you're really kind of digging what's going on. I feel like Sufjan Stevens is a big influence of mine. He's someone who's yeah. pretty prolific and also like some of the stuff he puts out, I don't like, and some of it I do. And, um, and, and it's one extreme to another sometimes. There's, right. Like Chicago, taking Chicago, for example, one of my top three songs of all time. Mm -hmm. But then I know he has done some other stuff where you just got to wonder, but <laughs> But then he just come, he came out with something else just now. Like he's doing these 10, 10 minute songs, but they're, I, I can't, I used to can't, I used to not listen to anything beyond like five, six minutes. And you don't like prog rock then? Uh, nah. <laughs> well, see, that's what I mean. I have a stig, I had a stigma with it because of who was put under that kind of going back to our whole like bubble thing. Boxes, categories. Yep. yep. Yeah. So now that I see certain like, Radiohead could be progressive. Like that's, you know, so it's like that category is I, I have to now get rid of that stigma and say, yeah, I, I if it's beautifully done and, that, and that's my point with like Sufjan, I, I was waiting. I was like, oh, 10 minutes. I, I have the time to listen to it now. <laughs> and somebody that I am really a big fan of is Brittany Howard from the Alabama Shakes. Oh yeah. Um, she, I didn't know this until recently because she sang about it on her last solo record. But her, she also has a white mom and a black dad, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, in the, in the also like knows some people in the queer scene in Nashville. I'm not trying to like out anybody, <laughs> but like she hangs out, and um, and also the my producer Rachel Moore was saying that she did a session with Britney and was trying not to like fangirl too hard, but. She had set up this whole elaborate microphone thing, but Brittany just said, I just need a 58. So, and just knows exactly that. how to work that mic and exactly what to do. I mean, that is, and I think artists such as like Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, uh, Prince, they always have known what it is that they want and how to achieve that. And I mean, like, I can't even talk about, um, Michael Jackson without talking about Quincy Jones because I feel like together they were the sound of the mm -hmm. stuff like I remember working out to Thriller one day and starting to cry because I just felt like there's not anyone doing something this good right now it's, which personal lives aside but just from a music standpoint those are some of my heroes and I would say that kind of to tie it all together what you said about just doing you and the audience will kind of like follow because I was thinking of Brittany Howard when you brought that up and the song that I wish would say on a radio ear person, radio, I was, would be surprised that it was a, it was a billboard hit. Um, but when this album came out, it did very well. She had uh, stay high. Mm -hmm. um and he loves me and history repeats and i think it was stay high that it's not your typical song in any way it opens it's, with it's, a glockenspiel what's that i think it opens with a glockenspiel yes yeah just and like it's just, a little and like a super chill acoustic guitar it's, like it's just it, it reminded me of like a poetic like beating it kind of just yeah, it's kind of like it reminded me a little of Anna DeFranco when she goes on with her poetic. I mean, it's not the song, but it's still labeled. Hi, Jimmy. Sorry. Is somebody? Do you have an order? Did you order something? No, it's the the neighbor dogs. Sorry about that. Okay. Jimmy, you gotta chill, man. Relax. So I wrote a song about Jimmy. Sorry, yeah, we could we could talk about that because I I didn't want to <laughs> go once once you had said about the open interpretation thing. I was like, all right, we won't go into that more. But 
<laughs> is it pretty sad? I, I, I haven't heard that song actually. So is it? Well, basically, um, after the tornado that we had sort of talked about earlier today, gosh, I feel like we've been all over the place with this conversation, but um, there, were, there were dogs that were uh, needing homes that were displaced from their homes because of all the destruction or people thought they could have a dog and because now they're out of work, out of home, the shelters were overflowing. Oh, wow, so yeah. I reached out about fostering a dog. Jimmy! And uh, this little puppy, and they said, this puppy is not available anymore, but there's a dog that's been in a kennel for like two weeks. Can you take him for the weekend? Uh, uh, okay. Why the just weekend? The weekend. I mean, just foster him, get him out of the... Wow. Okay. And, um, sorry, this is really difficult. I hear you before. okay. Um, and anyway, Jimmy just has been a struggle, but he's also been a really good quarantine buddy. So just this is a really good try time to write that... a song about somebody with a troubled past and unknown future. Because I wrote that song the day that he kind of had like a run in with my girlfriend oh. and like scraped up her arms. But I also was trying to have it be a bit of a nod to maybe someone with an addiction or a drug problem who can't stay in your house because you don't agree with the way that they live. Um, trying to see how it could be both. I like that. He's about... going to love you, Jimmy, if it's not for me because. There's, I know you're in Illinois, but here in Tennessee, there's just dogs in everyone's backyard, and like, it's sketchy yeah. sometimes. They just live on a chain. That's that's rough. I grew up with pets in the in the suburbs, and uh, it's a different thing out in the city. I will say, like the way they take care of them in a good way, but it's also very selective, which then you know that there's a lot left behind. You know, that is definitely a. a as cheesy as they make the Sarah McLaughlin uh, commer uh, commercials out to be, they still are relevant. You know what's really odd? We stopped talking about you know who. I think he wanted to talk about his song. And now he's not. I muted myself. So he's oh, darn it. Hearing on. I was like, that's so deep. <laughs> I'm keeping that part. I am... You hear him now? Oh God! I'm All right, sorry. I take back what I said, Jimmy. <laughs> Hang on. It is. It is funny though. Hey, how's he now? No more Dogs are smart, you know. Did you, you give gotta them raise them with love, uh -huh. and you gotta give them tools to succeed. But they can learn. They're like children, boys, boy <laughs> children. That's not gender, anybody. I, I just I could say no it because I work. I, on, no boxes. I know. No I actually bubbles. work at a I work in a school system that is a co-ed campus, single sex, but we're really on that mind frame of just breaking the boxes, but it's really hard to do mm. um, in the education sure. field. So question I had was, oh, just one last thing about Jimmy. Um, was, did you, is Jimmy, was he Jimmy or did you name him Jimmy? Hello? 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 Did you freeze? I think you froze. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Still there? Still there?
There you are. I'm back. Wow, that was. You're having storms right now. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we were earlier, and the power went out actually right before our meeting. Got it. And then it just went out and went back on, so we could lose each other again. I want to say thank you for having me, just in case we do get there disconnected. We had that. We had the really cool yesterday. To be part of it. Yeah. Th- this is. You know? it's, what's funny is, um, you know, for somebody that has a little out there now, that's your um, your EP. We definitely covered a lot of ground, but that's what the show is all about. Cool. We, we, and I, so l- let me do the lasting questions and then we can go into next, next steps. Um, sure. well, you talked about Instagram, so I'd like to do this live. Um, what's your handle? Is it just... Chris- it's at Kristen Ford Music, which is... Kristen Ford... You know. My name spelled the way it's spelled with music at the end of it. All I typed in was Kristen, and there you are. Um, Stuart, right? Hey. Joking. No. Uh, let's see. Kristen Ford yeah. Music hey. is Nashville based, based indie rocker. No plans EP. Came out. Oh, wait. Am I? It's not out yet. It says, it's not out yet. Oh, boy. That's good. Okay, I'll oh, tell you. Oh, I, I but you know was, what is out right now is Crooked Youth, the first single. Makes sense now. Okay. Well, and this is the first time in my career I'm going for a Grammy nomination. So oh, really? that is really exciting. And Crooked Youth pop single category. We'll see. It's a long shot, but I am in the running. Hey, you're on the list. That's all that matters. And you're now going to be <laughs> yeah. on my list of tell your friends the academy vote for it there you go sorry tay tay <laughs> i came here to like be be part of it so like girl share a year you know what i mean that's right oh <laughs> god i i don't even want to talk about i actually mm, we have not put much of her on i just think other people well, i don't i don't have any bones that documentary about her was actually interesting. If it's, I don't know if it's still on Netflix or not, but we're about the same age. So it was just interesting how events that I sort of remember in pop culture were like actually happening to her. <laughs> it was like, a, you know, but in a way we grew up on the same timeline because we're about the same age. Hmm. So anyway, no knocks but, on Taylor Swift. But the good news I is- I love you will belong with me and shake it off. But I do want her to lend me one Grammy nomination spot. Well, you could just do the pull the I Kanye. Just want to get just, nominated once in one category. Just jump on the stage. Just do a pull <laughs> of Kanye. Just go up there and go. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I just got one thing to say. I just think be- that's the first time anyone's been recommended to quote pull a Kanye. <laughs> that is true. I don't think I've ever said that, but sometimes <laughs> desperate times desperate measures um you have 2811 followers i am about to be your 20 uh 2812 woo thank you that's great uh, i don't see a follow back i don't know what's wrong with my phone it doesn't say a follow back guess i'm staying up tonight (sighs) well Kristen, um did she do it no. Yeah, sorry, the internet's a little uh, sketchy, but it's okay. Well, them well, Tennessee storms. What can I say? Is that how they say it down there in them parts? <laughs> I don't. I don't know who's yeah. even from here. That's true. Hard to say. Uh, your website, KristenFordMusic.com, and it has it has everything you mentioned, which is great. Did you write this? No, Joey did. Oh, your PR guy did. Yeah. Um, I find it's difficult to write about oneself objectively. You'd be surprised. But uh, No Plans EP is available for purchase right now. It's, and you can listen to all five songs. I just have only released the one single at this point for streaming. So 
Um, but I am looking forward to September 10th, it, it coming out in so, full array. Is the, so that, that's not Jimmy on the cover, right? The dog? No, that is a wild coyote that was in a bathroom at Music City Center, which is where the Country Music Hall of Fame is. That's a real photo of it so in the somehow bathroom? Somehow a wild animal got trapped in... Oh, so that's a real in photo. In a tourist attraction bathroom. Oh, that's not a place. <laughs> I guess it's how I've been feeling. That's deep. In COVID, I'm like a wild thing that can't tour, and I'm just stuck in the bathroom. And you got no plans. <laughs> so what, no plans. No plans. You're t- <laughs> I saw the this album cover, and I had no qu- no thoughts prior, but now I really see a lot of you in this i see a lot of us in this i see us thank you it's art sitting artist. yeah just sitting. it's this moment this moment moment um so what i might do then because i was gonna think about when to release this because i have some some in the lineup already um i'm wondering if, okay so you had talked about you might do some web shows or something um recording music in your in in there in your in your living room are you planning in the next month yeah um for sure we're gonna do i think a listening party on maybe the 9th of september to just listen down and and i think that might be over zoom we'll have just a hang so people from the record will be involved with that and um i just love gigging i love touring so i'm feeling it out this weekend in terms of a few in-person shows but as soon as it's safe i'm gonna be about. back out they're what? doing it and for sure trying to offer um different things online as much as possible with that would you so um, what i'm thinking is if you're doing something and if i release if i put this out september 9th is a wait september 9th no september september 10th is the release date so i believe it's a actually that's a big that's a big release weekend that's on a thursday but the big is the 11th thursday yeah it's a new way yeah we didn't want to do that so there's a Marilyn Manson has a new album out that day, ironically, but there's a lot of releases on September 11th, which I'm giving credit to a lot who have maybe chosen that to give a nice, a nice meaning behind it. But I, I'm thinking either we can, I can air this on the 6th or the 13th, but maybe the 6th. But what I'm thinking is if you were to record yourself whenever in the next month, of those three songs that we had talked about, I can play that instead of the the tracks themselves. It, it, the record or the record. Video? Yeah. I don't know. It's up to you. I never done that before. I just kind of, when you said something about playing live, I kind of st- stuck in my head to think, never thought of that. Not everyone has the, that going on behind them. Yeah. Well, um, but I, I wouldn't want to be, it doesn't have to be exclusive. Cool. It could just be, what did you say? The, you said the dates were the... 6th or the 13th. Or so my thought is, if I do the 13th... Thir- the 13th would be better for me because I'm going to be out of town before that. Okay. Well, my, okay. So the 13th, because my thought is... I am doing a web stream. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, uh, I'll just tell you my thought process about um, if I do the 13th, I could then play the other two tracks from the album so they can hear the album side of the production. And then if you were to do an acoustic or whatever, too crooked, happy and stick, I can put that, those in. If you record those, on your own whenever but i would like i was saying i don't want to make it exclusive like use it for other things i don't know it's up to you on 
your time and I could put those three versions on instead of the album version. Oh, okay. Um, or if you're doing yeah, this, well, this live I'm thing. I'm doing a web show Go ahead. for a gig on the 12th of September. In, okay. um, I'm taking over actually a theater like in my hometown, uh, their, their web takeover. So it's possible I could record something from that and then send them your way. And yeah. if it's not something that I'm like loving, can we go with the recordings? Absolutely. It, it, it's a total like well, i would be really into that if yeah. maybe the 13th when it gets okay then we'll plan the 13th uh oh Did I lose? oh no uh plan for the 13th for this air so what i'll what i'll do and that, that gives me time um because i've been kind of doing the editing is to edit this sure and then i'll have that already good done luck. what's that yeah i said good luck i'm gonna just basically put the first five and the last five and just say she's good <laughs> trust me no i it's a two-hour show i don't know if i actually told you that it's a two-hour show so uh, i i break it up that way so um there's plenty there's good but a lot of the banter in the beginning won't make it it's it's that's that's what i said i have to stick to the outline structure but you gave a lot of other mm -hmm. stuff that i'm going to put in as well so We'll do that. And then if you're like, cool, I love what I did at this theater. Here's that. Great. If not, I'll just play the songs. Great. Cool. That sounds good. All right. Well, um, this was, yeah, good. I'm, I, I haven't done a uh, kind of sporadic go with it in a while. So this, this was good. That is so my thing. So thank you for being into just rolling with it. Yes, I'm glad you weren't. Very cool. You didn't seem nervous. You didn't seem anything. I've, I've had all types of different people lately. So it's been nice. <laughs> and um, Jimmy kept quiet. So that is a success. Most, for the most part. It's kind of like. When it, right now. It's kind of like, oh. My God. He's fluting. Here, let me actually hold that. I want to take a photo of that. That's going to be, that's a screenshot right there. There we go. Um, it's kind of like when the baby's sleeping, you're like, okay, I'm going to let you go. It's nice to see you. And then I, I accidentally slam the door as I leave. And then you're like, damn it. Um, well, Kristen, it was great meeting you, talking to you. Um, I can honestly say that we will have a follow-up with you for sure. Maybe even sooner than next year, because we, it depends on the world. And if you're out there and if let's, you come back. Let's catch up at the Grammys. We'll you catch up on the Grammys. You can talk about Taylor. <laughs> Hi, your besties. We could talk about... Right? Uh, I think we could be friends. I don't see why not. I mean, you, you could... You might just be the next song. She hasn't sung about other women, right? You'd be... Are you still with the girl? You still oh, have a girlfriend? You want me to seduce her? This took a turn. No, she's just gonna date you. That's what she does. She just dates you to make a song out of you. People are machines to her. They're dollar signs. Wow. I that's, don't know if I wanna That's the truth. I might put anything on anybody I don't know. But okay. anyway, thank you so much for having me. It's been a really it's been a joy to talk to you, likewise, fellow likewise. Colum alum. Yes, and, alum, uh, right? Total graduate. Let's, Euro. <laughs> let's be in touch. Oh, they're well. going to give me an honorary degree one of these days. <laughs> they will. <laughs> and you're going to come out and we'll play their uh, Frisbee. They're known for their Frisbee team. Oh, well, that's good to know. That's all they have. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. See you uh, check in at some point before the 13th. Yes. Good luck this weekend. Okay. Thanks. Wear that face mask, which you can buy you at kristenfordmusic.com. Yeah, I've got face masks. I love it. That's, that oh, was actually yeah. a go-to question okay. for a while, and no one's like, no. You got it. Good. I'll buy one. I'm on it. All right. See you, Kristen. Should uh, they're, I actually have to pick them up in Atlanta uh, on Saturday. So they're not available for sale yet. But once I get them in my possession, you got it. Okay. Ship them up to you in Illinois. There you go. Signed autograph. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Right, have a good night. See ya. Bye. Bye.